Operation Herrig 12, Afghanistan. 1st Battalion The Royal Gurkha Rifles deployed to the Nagi Saraj district of Helmand Province in April 2010 for a six-month operational tour of duty in a ground-holding role. They did not realize how hard the operational tour was going to be. The battle group took over from the cold stream guards who had made great progress bringing security to an area only recently cleared of insurgent occupation. The initial battle group force lay down saw Hay Company deployed in a ground holding capacity at patrol base 3 near the village of Rhyme Kalai. With the end of the poppy harvest and the beginning of summer, the insurgent activity picked up considerably, threatening the local villagers. The Royal Gurkha Rifles battle group took the fight to the enemy and surged into the areas where he was strongest. The first major operation involved pushing three companies up into an area that had not been penetrated before. Intelligence suggested that it was effectively under insurgent control, and that it contained two critical choke points that they used to transit through, using tunnels under the major canal towards the northern boundary of the battle group's area of operations. The Royal Gurkha Rifles Battle Group began the operation by pushing Hay and B Companies north to draw the insurgents forward, and then inserted C Company on the choke points by helicopter. It rapidly became apparent that the enemy was going to contest this area strongly. All companies were engaged by small arms fire and rocket propelled grenades by an enemy who constantly sought to outmaneuver the battle group. C Company took two early casualties, caught by rocket-propelled grenade shrapnel, but their blocking actions were highly effective. Hay and B Companies were under constant attack, but still managed to push forward. The operation's aim was to overmatch the enemy to enable commanders to discuss issues with the local elders uninterrupted, but the enemy resistance reduced these opportunities. However, Partnered Afghan forces were able to detain two fighters who provided a wealth of information. After this initial operation and throughout the tour Hay Company moved into a period of consolidation by conducting patrolling activity around patrol base 3. Typical tasks were to conduct vehicle checkpoints, foot patrols and compound searches with partner forces of the Afghanistan National Army and the Afghanistan National Police. On patrol there was the hidden menace and high threat of the improvised explosive device, either initiated by a pressure plate or by command wire. The initiated IED would cause a single or multiple explosions in which a patrol could be caught resulting in multiple casualties. During this time a pattern formed and most patrols were engaged by small arms fire and or rocket propelled grenades. A company joined further battle group level operations in surging into enemy held areas where they were defeated or pushed back throughout the operational tour. In some areas of one RGR battle group area of operations the enemy felt far too confident, safe and secure. One RGR battle group made a move and pulled together a hasty surge into the area to move in before dawn the next day. C and Malta companies moved on foot into flank protection positions before dawn, and Hay Company then flew into the enemy's depth by Chinook helicopter and conducted an air assault. As they began to clear through a series of villages the enemy reoriented themselves and focused their attention on Hay Company, starting what was to become an eight-hour battle. The company crept forward, coming under effective and accurate fire from several positions. Hay Company were unable to engage with air support or artillery due to the risk of civilian casualties. Every 15 minutes or so the company commander would listen on the enemy radio to a call to re-attack. Followed seconds later by a ripple of machine gun and rocket propelled grenade fire as they did so. Hay Company RGR liaison officer led the Afghanistan National Army platoon that he was mentoring on a charge to gain a foothold in the village from where the fire was coming, and the company then steadily pushed forwards, suppressing and clearing each firing point as they went. 
This was an infantry battle through and through, with the added complexity of there being limited air or attack helicopter support, and the fact that the enemy were employing tactics such as moving away from firing points surrounded by groups of children. Miraculously, Hay Company sustained no casualties that day, and then two days later they went and repeated it all again about five kilometers to the west. The pressure that this put on the insurgents was enormous. Hay Company, 1st Battalion The Royal Gurkha Rifles Battle Group who have endured great hardship and suffering during this operational tour but have maintained their fighting spirit right up to the end. They have constantly walked the tightrope of counter-insurgency operations, trying to find the balance between the use of force and the engagement with people through dialogue and development. Unfortunately Hay Company suffered during Operation Herrick 12. A number of killed in action and casualties which some have been life-changing. The Gurkha motto is it is better to die than to be a coward. The insurgent Taliban enemy opposition to Hay Company. Enemy insurgent strength was assessed to be three main groups of insurgents operating in varying strengths. In the north of the company area of operation the enemy strength was assessed to be 20 to 30 fighters. It was common for indigenous scouting screens of local nationals sympathizers who call on ICOM radio when friendly forces are close which queue up the fighters. The tailbone scouting screen operates from within every village, with an increased presence in the inner ring of villages near patrol base 3. The screen consists of mainly local national sympathizers who own an ICOM radio and will transmit with no call sign stating that ISAF are coming. There is however actual dedicated Taliban scouts that the fighters bring with them to be sent forward on specific operations. Weapons The largest threat seen over the tour within the area of operations has been from small arms fire and the company has experienced over 100 contacts during Operation Herrick 11 and beginning of Operation Herrick 12. These have largely been shoot and scoot maneuvers to harass friendly forces, with the majority of engagements lasting no longer than five minutes, however some concerted and prolonged attacks have occurred. Engagement distances have ranged from 15 meters to 400 meters, with insurgents demonstrating a good degree of accuracy and being able to deliver effective fire at 300 meters. The enemy will conduct deliberate ambushes against friendly forces patrols initiated with a command wire improvised explosive device followed up with concentrated volume of small arms and machine gun fire. The insurgents main weapon of choice is the AK-47 assault rifle. The insurgents possess a large quantity of PKM machine guns within the area of operations. Rocket propelled grenade attacks are common and the predominant mode of use has been the direct roll usually as a means of initiating a contact. Patrol Base 3 has come under indirect fire attack on only three occasions during Operation Herrick 11 and none during Operation Herrick 12. The first was assessed to be 82mm mortar primarily aimed at the large gathering of local nationals at Patrol Base 3 collecting wheat seed during the seed distribution program. The second occasion the round was assessed to be fired at but flew over Patrol Base 3. A blind 107 mm rocket was cleared from the compounds just to the north. The third was an unidentified weapon but it fell well short of the patrol base. Improvised Explosive Threat IEDs. Relatively few IEDs had been found in the area of operations it's worth noting however that seven pressure plate IEDs were found in a lone compound 500 meters north of patrol base 3 that is clearly overwatched by the patrol base. During engagements, the Taliban have demonstrated a desire to survive contact and always attempt to withdraw. Within this area of operations they will not prepare any kind of ambush unless they are confident of a secure extraction route. The Nepalese Gurkha soldiers who are an integral part of the British Army. They still carry into battle their traditional weapon, an 18-inch long curved knife known as the Kukri. This is used in close quarter battle when the Gurkhas close in on their enemy and are in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The motto of the Gurkhas is better die than be a coward. <laughs>